Ranjan has a question. How to distinguish between love and attachment? There is a story of King Bharat who died in worry that a deer he cared for did not come. This was not love perception. Okay, I don't know the story, but I know what is the difference between love and attachment. Love is about giving and attachment is about taking. Love is fearlessness, attachment is the fear of losing and love is freedom, attachment is bondage. Everybody knows that, isn't it? And who else can tell me, you know? Let us do this Q&A again. Anybody wants to add more point in points in this table? Love versus attachment. Very, very knowledgeable people here in this matter, I think, more than me. Because I never love and I don't have any attachment. No practical knowledge here. What I know is, you know, when you don't need anything, when you find you, I am whole and complete, the, the consequence is love. We call it the unconditional love. Where you don't want, but you don't want to give also. You are also the Brahman. What are you asking? Love me, please. What? We are already one. Yes, Muni is saying attachment is selfish, love is selfless. Very good. Or it is the self in two forms. One and same thing, is it? Satya is saying love lets one free attachment cages. That is what I said, bondage and freedom. Yes, Ranjit has another point. That attachment causes suffering. And love causes happiness. This is guaranteed. Love always causes happiness. The one who is giving is happy. One who is receiving is happy. Attachment, give me this thing. Do this for me. And those who are asking, they are also in hell. And they are making the other person's life also hell. This is attachment. No, no, don't go. I want you in my life. What is that? Not love. Now that person is also in chains. And this one is also already in chain. Love is godliness. Very nice, yes. All there is is love. You know, what is the definition of love on the path of knowledge? Uh, Non-duality. There is only one. Love is recognition of oneness of everything. You and me and everything else is one. Now, how much love you need after that? Whom are you going to love? Nobody else. (laughs) Self-love. That is why it is unconditional. Because when there are two, you need to be really careful here. What are you loving and whom you are loving? But here unconditionally, you you can dumb that person anytime. It does not cause any suffering of any kind. Yes, you know, because we are humans, we may feel a few things here and there. Sometimes it feels like somebody is leaving me. But that is attachment only. Attachment is leaving you. (laughs) If if somebody leaves you, somebody dies or, you know, anything happens uh, and you feel pain, it is the attachment leaving you. Because the attachment was so deep. Like the arrow, uh, it, when it is withdrawn, it's, it's a pain. But you will become normal in one day. If you have the proper awareness, if you have done your step number four properly, you can come out of the human tendencies in one day. I am not saying don't experience it. Why not? You experience it. Experience the pain of attachment. But don't remain attached to that pain. Let it go. Graham is saying non-difference of lover and beloved. Very nice, very nice. There is no difference in love. The thing that, you know, I love you, false statement, isn't it? There is no I and you in love. There is only loving. And it sounds a lot like the experience and the experience, sir. It is nothing. It is experiencing. So when I say I love you, there is no I here. And there is no you there. It's loving. So you can be in the love. You cannot do the love. It's probably you can make love, but that is a totally different aspect of Poonam is saying, love frees the love one, attachment is bondage. Very good, yes. Like the biggest bondage is marriage in our society. It is totally survival based, animalistic relation, marriage. That is why none of it is happy. And only those who are very simple people, villagers and tribals, they are happy in marriage, in the bondage. As soon as you become a little bit grown up, educated, aware, now you won't be able to marry anybody. It does not mean that you won't be able to love everybody, anybody. You will be able to love whomever you want. So that is why I am totally against all kind of bondages. The marriage is a bond which will last for many lifetimes. The consequences, the linger for many lifetimes. You have a love affair, no issue at all. It is also for many lifetimes, but it is not going to cause any bondage. You will meet the same lover again and again many times, but it's um, freedom. So any kind of legal relation where you need to sign because the other person needs to survive on your money, very bad. 
never let the society tell you what is love and don't tell the society they need to suffer they need the fruit of their karmas gram is saying the lover feels the same about himself and the beloved dear yes, there is no difference at all actually in a good uh, relation of love the minds become one you will find the evidence of uh, universal memory here if you are deeply in love you will know what they are doing what they are thinking whether they are in trouble or whether they are angry or sad merging happens why is there uh, like hate hate is the embodiment of separation i am not like you this is the hate or i am better than you or you are not worth me this is the hate love is exactly opposite is the merging not a separation and the merging is manifested as the destruction of the walls between the minds is possible i mean almost everybody gets this kind of experience you remember the person whom you are loving you get the call or you already know that your girlfriend is going to send you pictures you open the mail there are pictures happens a lot to everybody but because of the ignorance they kind of cannot think more than that if you ask a person on the path of knowledge immediately will say universal memory i told you so yes universal memory <laughs> you see what do you need to do to get an evidence of the universal memory love fall in love see how beautiful it is sweetie is saying because existence is one therefore when when becomes one with it love is called to be unconditional very nice very sweet uh, love is effortless attachment requires effort shreya very good very good very unique thing yes you don't need to do any effort to love anybody you know it's in there it's just there attachment you need to keep that person bound to you by hook or crook by gifting things or by serving that person or by manipulation or sometimes people lie there a lot of effort isn't it sweet is saying only when you are in ignorance we seek or want love very nice uh, the ignorant person is always asking for something and a knowledgeable person is always giving something take it i have love you know i am love okay how much you want no no you are ugly i don't want your love okay no problem <laughs> i still love you so it has nothing to lose you see love has nothing to lose and uh, attachment is already lost already things have been lost there that is why it is fearful mary is saying love has always been a misunderstood concept in history guruji is the an <laughs> example of unconditional love no you are also an example you see. you and me are one isn't it we are all examples the thing is some of the examples they don't know that they are examples <laughs> some of the samples they don't know <laughs> what they are they are the trouble makers isn't it like i say there are seekers and there are trouble seekers always seeking trouble but they, you see the existence is all the possibilities we need the hate to understand the importance of the love we need the conditional love to understand the, the lightness of the unconditional love conditional love is very heavy isn't it you do this for me i'll do that for you no no i don't have time for you okay i don't love you then or i i love somebody else not you and that is a, that is a, you know real test of your love that you if you let go that person okay i'm happy if you are in love with somebody i still love you probably i love you doubly because now i won't be able to see you more So that is the test of your unconditional love do you tie the other person in conditions or not so everybody can be yes because there is a human angle here we do feel bad when somebody says no i don't love you i love somebody else we start crying and it lasts for a day or two <laughs> we play the sad songs of the old movies and so on but it can return to normal start loving doubly send more love and let go anyhow beto pen is saying attachment is a survival mechanism love is about survival very nice very nice oh that means we should not survive and what no 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 if you if you need to say an attachment of some kind stay there it is necessary for survival like the mother and the child they are attached to each other without this attachment survival is not guaranteed but as soon as the baby grows up now you need to be unconditional the love can stay the attachment can go the bond can stay but the chain can be cut isn't it i i don't think people understand this thing i don't think 
people have the common sense to understand what I am saying or what you already know, what people in our satsang know. Ordinary people don't understand these things. Pandurang is saying, in the midst of the whole drama of human life, uh, marriage, seems like it provides a good opportunity for evolution of this creature. Is it okay? Better to stay away from these challenges? No, 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 no. You see, uh, life is a challenge only for those who are ignorant. For those who know it is a play. Why do you think it is a challenge? Why is marriage and kids and other people are a challenge? Play them, they are puppets. They are your toys. The thing is, when we are ignorant, it looks like a challenge and then it is helpful for our growth. If the life is without any challenge, you will find that the person that who, grow, who does not grow up really, the person becomes really shallow. And a good example of that is, you know, highly pampered people who received everything because their parents were rich and so on. Or they got the good education and you know, never never got troubled by any anything. And now you talk to them and they are totally shallow people. The most deepest conversation they can have is about their dog, what their dog does all day. <laughs> That's all they know. Or they know the names of the products and the brands of the products. That's all they can think about. But look at a person who has gone through the mill of the life. You can benefit from his experience. So, don't stay away from the challenges. Know why it, is, it sounds like a challenge. Know why it sounds like a, something to be overcome. And once you know, which is only possible on the path of knowledge under the guidance of a proper guru, then it is no more a challenge. It is a stepping stone. I'll tell you something which is never told in any scriptures or <laughs> any other lecture by these gurus is that you don't need to take the lesson twice. What do I mean by that? You married once and you suffered. <laughs> don't marry again. You had one child. You know what is a child, you see. Don't, don't produce another. Don't reproduce again. <laughs> this is never mentioned in any scripture. This is the secret I am telling you. You, you are troubled by other people, your boss or somebody employee or your neighbor. Kick them out of your life. You got the lesson. Is, is it really intelligent to take the lesson every day? You got it. Leave them. Kick them out. You understood. Now, do we need to study again and again and again? No. Give the book away to somebody who needs it. Your, na your neighbor can go and trouble somebody else, you see. They need the challenge, not you. you see, this is the practical thing. I never do it. I never take the lesson again. It is too bitter. We don't want it. It is too uncomfortable. 